Hi, my name is Arvid, and today I will have a short presentation about Ned Blocks, a mental paint from 2003. Um, he promotes phenomenism, um, which is a kind of qualia theory, by criticizing representationalism. Um, so, I will first present representationalism and then phenomenist models. Um, when I, uh, then I will present Bloch's pluralistic criticism of representationalism um, and its defense. Mainly the defense comes from Dretzke. Um, to cause less association confusion, which is very common when we talk about um, phenomenology, uh, I use language examples when defending representationalism, even though Dretzke sometimes does not use language. Um, for all of the arguments, I will use language, try to use language for all the defenses. Uh, because drawing parallels to language, language suits representationalists well. Um, the premise is that language is representational. It's hard to argue against language being representational. Uh, hence, if the situation does not cause language problems, there are no representational problems. Okay. So, according to Dretzke, experience is representation. So everything that represent everything that experience is is representational content. Um, ex there's external and internal representationalism, but the only difference between them or only is that the external representationalist says that uh, they think that what is represent represented is ontologically there. It exists outside. Whereas in internal representationalists, uh, they say that it's not necessary, much like uh, Wittgenstein's language games, if you've read Wittgenstein, the later Wittgenstein. Um, so, Bloch's phenomenism, or the qualia, this qualia theory, however, says that representation is, it may exist, but it's within cognition, and then outside cognition, there is something that is called qualia, and which is what it is to experience. And the main part of that is uh, not representational. Um, Dretzke agrees that representational, all the representations are within cogni cognition. However, he says that that's the only thing that there is. This mm, outside qualia does not is not part of the phenomenology, according to him. So, um, Bloch explains that if you experience a red apple, you need to sense and become aware of it for it to, to be represented. So he shows this with example of orgasms and example of unidentified colors like the Marvin problem. So, Bloch has identified several, several pluralistic problems for the representationalist. Um, how do you, for instance, explain someone seeing the difference between red and blue when they do not have this in their language? So he explains that by they are not, they are different non-representational experiences according to the Phenomen <laughs> phenomenism. Um, however, using uh, Dretzke's argumentation, there are several situations where you could have this. So, for instance, here um, we have un English that can be experienced with two different representations. So, this is how and why? Oh, yeah. How and why? And you don't know that uh, unless you're Chinese. 
uh, and maybe you didn't even know that those symbols were Chinese. So as long as the receiver does not master un-English, then you can have an un-English experience with other languages, even though those two are, uh, those two symbols are something representational. So moving on, uh, next, a card magician can both feel and see red. So for block, this would be a problem because it states that they are, they would then be different experiences, not one representation. However, uh, the Leipzig law would defend the representationalist in this situation. Kennedy, the president and the killed American president, both are the experience of JF Kennedy and refers to the same person. Uh, here, Dretzke tries another argumentation, which is called the different kinds. And I think that explanation is um, less convincing. The last um, pluralistic problem that put uh, that block um, describes is his twist on Putnam's twin earth. Um, that twin earth situation would only be possible with a pluralistic experience, according to Bloch. Something cannot be shifting representation, representation representing two different things in seemingly the same situation. So it's important that it's seemingly the same situation although it's not really the same situation. However, according to Bloch, it's the same experience. Um, well, there is an, a linguistic similarity or the same thing happens in linguistic situations. Um, so however, shifting representational content over time, representing seemingly identical but different situations is possible. Um, and I'm using a language comparison. However, Dretzke uses the faulty radar uh, in the same kind of way. Um, so if you read Dretzke, the faulty radar example, and you can use for the same, for the same situation. Uh, I just wanted to keep to language. So this one needs some explanation. When being five years old in Sweden, Two girls walked up to me with baskets full of apples and asked sex. I experienced it as a question about six apples because sex means both six and sex in Swedish. And as a five year old, I would definitely associate and I would, it would be a representation of six apples, which would have probably been the correct representation. However, as an exchange student in America, seemingly, but not the same, happened again. That time I experienced something completely different. So here we see a clear situation where you can have um, shifting representation um, of the same representational content. it's not even the same yeah you could call the same representation of content so finally the last and the most powerful argument i want to talk to you about here is the marvin example um after marvin after uh, block has uh, distilled the argument against potential objections the result follows what if Someone, someone that never experienced colors hallucinates colors or falls victim to the Cartesian devils simulating colors. What is represented then? So someone that ha knows nothing about colors, not like Mary, but Marvin. What are they? What? are they seeing? What are they experiencing? Okay. 
And that one I could not feel a, find a proper answer from Dretske. Um, however, we have some thoughts. I will leave you with my three criticisms of Block, where two of them is about this last, um, this last argument. So number one, if we allow the Cartesian devil, why is qualia real? So if we allow the Cartesian devil argument, which is the, the um, um, skeptical, the most powerful skeptical argument, why should we not be skeptical about qualia then? There's nothing that says that you shouldn't be that. Um, number two, is it possible to hallucinate an alien color? Can you even imagine an alien color? So if you can't imagine an, an alien color, how can you hallucinate an alien color? If we, yeah, so that's, that's an argument as well. Um, finally, and the last one, uh, can something outside cognition still be considered phenomenology? Bloch in his speech, uh, Copernicus, and I really suggest you look at it because it made me understand Bloch better, argues that a wasp behaves mechanically without cognition and at the same time has sensation, so it has some kind of qualia. Is the definition of qualia a reaction? Because if it behaves mechanically, isn't it just then a mechanical reaction? If I shine a white light on a diamond, it, seem, it sends back different colors. And if I push on the pedals of a bicycle, it moves forward. Is phenomenism or qualia the phenomenology of stones and bicycles? This would open up an entirely new field of philosophy, which I think would be quite exciting. So with that, I'm going to show you the reference list and thank you.